The following podcast contains some strong language and some very average opinions. Any references to actual people are wildly inaccurate. It's probably best if you don't listen at all. The Roaring Peacock Podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Roar and Peacock Youth Podcast. This is episode six. This is the Niall Huggins special. We're also going to talk about Leeds' 4-2 victory over Middlesbrough this past week and look ahead to Leeds' inevitable victory against Reading this coming Monday? Monday. Yes, Monday. He says confidently. <laughs> so I am your host, Ross, and with me as ever is Cookie. Hello. Rob is here. Hi, hey. And we're joined by Matty Ingram, who's uh, at LUFC New Academy News on Twitter. Welcome, Matt. He's Matty Ingram, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, so you're going to join us for the whole show, basically. Uh, we're going to start with the match review, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. Those are rubbish, aren't they? <coughs> well, are they rubbish or did we make them look bad? I thought that we were excellent. Honestly, like, I mean, the first half, um, we were absolutely immense and we made a few subs at half time which sort of changed things around a bit and then you could see that we, we struggled a bit in the second mm. half. Obviously, I think, tell me if I'm wrong and people, you know, with, with someone like Matty who knows what he's actually talking about, we get called out <laughs> if we get things wrong now. Um, <laughs> but I think Greenwood missed a pen in the second half, but I mean... Terrible star- pen as well. Oh mm. yeah, it was. Star of the show for me, honestly. Um, I know a lot of people say Gellart and obviously we, we featured him last week. Um, but Somerville, who we featured a yeah. few weeks ago, three assists. The man was mm. just absolutely on fire, creating stuff from everywhere. Great to see Jack Jenkins um, get his third assist of the season. A goal for the young lad, Max Dean, looks sensational. Kenner, who I think we'll, we'll cover Max Dean and Kenner, both of them shortly, as well as Jack Jenkins. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, it was just, just a really exciting game. And it was we obviously lost Gellar at half-time, um, which we saw why in the end, didn't we? Because he obviously yeah. was in the first-team squad. It was Shame he didn't get onto the pitch against Palace, but um, yeah, overall, mate, we just we, we annihilated and took us foot off the gas. Mark said after the game that you know the second half was more difficult, um, but yeah, I thought yeah. we were really really good. Some of it reminds me so much of Max Gradle. <laughs> yeah. that he's, he's just all over that, but that front three just buzzing around everywhere. He's so yeah, he's such a live wire. Rob, yeah. what do you think to the game? Yeah, I thought like we spoke about for the past four weeks, five weeks in a row now, it was controlled again. I think the only difference being this time is we dropped off in intensity in the second half. Previously, yeah. I've, I've used words like, uh, you know, or phrases like strength in the tackle, saw it out, grinded out that kind of 1-0 or that, that result. Um, but I thought in the second half, and you can see it in the stats, the possession stats dipped, the passing accuracy dropped for the first time, under 70%, I think, uh, for the under-23s, which is unusual. So you start to have that kind of lapse in mentality, which some of it could be because there were the younger lads in. You know, we had yes. some some yeah. of the, the other, even younger ones who came on. Um, big, big boots to fill from, from what we spoke about in terms of previous performances. But I thought overall it was good. I agree with Cookie. Somerville, first 20 minutes was untouchable. Absolutely on fire. What what an absolute performance from him. Um, it was it was a, a good performance. I think Casey impressed me as well in the second half, especially. I think Casey had a good game. Um, and, and I agree. I think we'll be covering um, Kenny in the next few weeks. We spoke about him the week before last as well as having a good performance. I thought he was as solid as, 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 as can be, especially with... Um, you know, potential issues with Phillips in the first 11. Is there scope yeah. again for him to step up to the bench and get a bit of exposure um, with the first 11? Depends what happens with that number four role. But yeah, overall, good performance. Um, and uh, I think the first half is what we've come to expect. I think the second half, we just maybe had a mental lapse and took our foot off the gas. But overall, another solid win. I think it was important yeah. what you mentioned there, though, Rob, that I think there was five or six by the end of the game under 18s yeah. on the pitch, yeah. um, which is important to, to note. Um, but yeah, I, th- I thought we were excellent. What did you think, uh, Matty? Yeah, I mean, you pretty much covered it between yourselves. Like The first half on fire and then the second half had to had to grind it out. But I think they did. They conceded quite early in the, in the second half. I think it was only three or four minutes. And for such a young team out, you thought, oh, are they going to crumble here? I mean, Borough had, mm. uh, they had the first team, they had Jordan Archer, Grant Hall and Ashley Fetcher who were like established first team players. Yeah. Then they had yep. uh, Hayden Coulson and uh, they had another lad who's got um, the right winger Spence. They, they're yeah. both under 21, but have first team experience. So, I mean, they had a strong, they had a strong side out and against yep. the 
a young Leeds team, you thought, oh, a Leeds just going to crumble here. But uh, they, they responded really well to conceding. Uh, I think they got the penalty at 4-1. So, I mean, yeah, that just yeah. shows they literally conceded. <laughs> Heads up, like, chests out, like, yeah, we're going to keep going. Got the penalty, could have made it 5-1. But, yeah, both to, to both goals, they uh, responded really well. And... It was a mature performance second half, I think. Yeah, it was good to see um, good to see them not crumble because I think that happened earlier in the season and we've talked a lot about how they've yeah. become much stronger in defence. I was really glad to see Oliver, um, Oli Casey have a good game yeah. because I feel like he's taken quite a lot of sticks since the Crawley game and him and Creswell have a great partnership um, when they play together at centre-half and obviously he, wasn't, um, he didn't have Creswell alongside him, did he? Because Creswell, again, was with the first team. Mm. Um, so it was, it was Jenkins, good. Jenkins, didn't he? Start the game centre back, wasn't he? Yeah, it was, it was some, there were some weird positions um, oh, in yeah. that game. But yeah, it was it was good to see um, Casey have a good game, maybe get some of his, his confidence back and see us solidify that position at the top of the league. Um, again, like miles in front now. Yeah. Surely, they did really champions. well against, <laughs> against Ashley Fletcher, who's a £7.5 million striker. We yeah. played that for Patrick Bamford. I was like, just about to talk. We were, we were in for Fletcher, weren't we? Yeah, I was just about day. to talk about that. It's interesting to see the juxtaposition of how we coped with Fletcher and what we did mm. to him and what they couldn't do to Gelhart because of his yeah. movement yeah. and his intelligence. Yeah. It seemed like if you put those two players in front of you and ask who did you pay, who paid seven million for which player, <laughs> yeah. you know the answer is going to be most people would say Gelhart on that performance. So, yeah. I mean, not not to knock Ashley. I mean, for, from an England perspective, I hope he gets back on form and steps back up. He's still a young lad, isn't he? Um, and, and he's got a lot of first-team experience out and about. But, um, yeah, Gelhart looked, for me, levels above him. And I think there's something in that. Gel, yeah, Gelhart was unplayable. It was absolutely phenomenal, wasn't it? Him and Somerville mm. just ran the show and you could see that. Yeah. Those two could definitely, um, I think, before this season's out, get first team appearances and actually make an impact. I mean, um, particularly I'd like to see what Somerville can do because it feels like he offers, I mean, you could disagree, but I feel like he offers a bit more than what Perveda does. I'd certainly rather see him Mm. in the first team than Costa. He offers something different, very direct runner, very confident taking people on. Um, His final ball does still need some work, but clearly if he's getting this many assists, it is a a very different level, but... Mm. Um, I think Somerville looks, and he's obviously had a lot of first team football playing near a DVC. Um, you know, last season, didn't he? he played a lot of games. Um, he, he looks a talent. So yeah. it, it was a really good result and just solidified, like I say, at the top of the league. We look confident up there, don't we? And it, it looks like we'll be a hard team to knock off, off the perch at the moment. Yeah, we've got a 10 point gap uh, to Stoke, Reading, or who we play next. We've got two games in hand on us and they're only 12 points behind. So they could close it a little bit, keep it interesting. Not but... when we beat them. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. That would put us even further ahead of them. Nine, nine games to go. I, th- I think this is ours, isn't it, really? Well, a few weeks ago, we were talking on this very same pod, but obviously the, the episodes before, about um, first v second being us v Wolves, and that game got postponed, yeah. and now yeah. Wolves are sixth. Wolves are sixth. So <laughs> the drop that they've had in, in just three or four weeks since we were talking about first v second being Leeds v Wolves, and actually I even made some notes for preparation for us, us, us v Reading being first v second um, until mm. Stoke got the victory last week, and now Stoke have jumped into second. So yeah. I think we've remained constant in terms of performance and levels at first, and between second and probably, I'd say, Burnley down to eighth, there's been quite a bit of movement up and down the table yeah. below us with people dropping points. So we've stayed consistently winning. The refer- just on that note, the, the reverse fixture against Reading, uh, they, they won 3-2. They were bottom yeah. of the league. When when they beat us, they yeah. were bottom of the league. Wow, so that's quite a comeback for Reading. They've gone, they've gone on a good run as well. I think they're three wins, three wins on the bounce right now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it is well, an unpredictable league, five, but we've it? just been the most consistent. And let's be honest, that's far and away the best team. I've, Wolves yeah, were yeah. actually really good when we drew two two at Thorpe Arch. Wolves are actually a really good side. Um, and other than that, I honestly don't. Even the games we've lost. Uh, I mean, Reading we had a young side out. Newcastle absolutely threw it away ourselves. Uh, yeah. And I can't, I can't even remember the, the other loss. You, you, you lads might have it, but we've been we've been the better side in every single game so yeah it'll be interesting to see who plays on Monday and I guess we'll talk about that in the the preview but particularly with us having a game tomorrow interesting to see whether because I think Pablo's still injured by the sounds of it obviously Calvin's out we interested to see who's on that bench I'm assuming Gelhart will be in there again um um who knows maybe Somerville will 
get a jump up there. We'll have to I wait think I think Huggins and Cresswell, and it depends what he does with the first eleven. Because I think for me, I'd leave Stroke at centre back. Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd drop Dallas into CDM, and then I'd put Shackleton in with Klitsch. So then on the bench, yeah. that's why I mentioned it very briefly earlier. Um, I hope that Kenny gets a chance to step up on the first eleven bench. I don't think yeah. he'll get any minutes, but just as a stepping up point, I think that's the progression. I, for me. The way that position's been held, I'd leave Stroke at centre back. I just please it. don't change that centre back pairing, please. Yeah. I'm just no, finally no, getting fine. some confidence with it. Yeah. Come on. That bench against Palace, you compared to benches, they couldn't fill their bench. They only had six subs. Have they not got an academy? Like, where are all their youth players? I, I did <laughs> wonder that. What, six? <laughs> no, I, did, I did wonder that. It's I mean, they, actually, point. <laughs> they, have had a, they have a fairly successful academy, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I was really, really confused. I don't know if it's to do with the bubbles, maybe. Coronavirus related. Uh, um, yeah, I know fifth Leeds in our league. have managed it so <laughs> Leeds have managed yeah. it so the twenty three players can still step up and down. But well, Bielsa is quite unique really, in that yeah. in terms of how he integrates. We've talked about this before on the pod about how he integrates the first team and the under twenty three is very differently to a lot of other clubs. So yeah. I imagine you're probably right there, Matty, in that. Um, I bet Palace keep their first team and their under-23s completely separate and have separate yeah, bubbles, whereas no ours idea, are joined. So, <laughs> yeah, interesting. Roy's contract's up soon. He doesn't care anymore. Roy's given up. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> if Zaha's not here, I'm not bothered. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we may as well go straight on to the Reading preview then, save the big uh, Huggins preview for the end. Yeah. Um, so Reading are, they're going well. They are third, like I said. So it's not going to be an easy game, but I, I just can't see Leeds losing to any teams. Like, bar, like uh, May said, against the Newcastle game, we throw it away. There's no teams that are better than us in this division. No, I mean, it's interesting because last time we played them, actually, I was looking at it and I, I've, I've not checked to see whether it coincided with like an EFL trophy game or anything like that. Um, because although we lost 3 2 um, and Gelhart played, it was a really young team. They had Max McMillan playing up front, Max Dean was playing, um, Josh mm-hmm. Galloway. So Max Dean and Josh Galloway were the ones who got on the score sheet. Um, and it was very heavily um, under 18s was yeah. that game against Reading last time. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. I'm, I'm assuming we'll have a much stronger outfit um, against Reading this time because it feels like the under 23s have got a more consistent team at the moment. Mm. But with a mixture still of those, some, some of those under 18s who've come on a bit. I mean, Max Dean in particular, mm. I think for me, I, I, I'm not going to compare him to Bamford because I actually think he's a better natural goal scorer than Bamford. But yeah. he, he's certainly getting used to that running the lines, creating space like Bamford does. He's a very, very hard-working centre-forward. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what, what team goes out against them. But I'm, I'm confident and I, I'm going to predict a, a 3-1 win for me. I'm going for it. Uh, yeah, 2-0. Two, two Comfortable 2-0. Two 2-0. Nil. Two nil. Much like the, the first team against Palace, we just batter them. should be more. But, yeah, just the, the breaks don't come. But 2-0 victory, yeah. easy for Leeds. What do you reckon, Matty? I'm always so nervous about jinxing it. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to... We've done this every week and they haven't lost yet, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, we've talked so much with... about I'm not losing, the defo are going to lose now, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> I know, I'm so wary of it. If, we, if we're having to do predictions, I'll say 3-1. Yeah, I never do that with first team by way. Never. No. Yeah, never, I, ever, I ever. always stay away. I always stay away yeah. from it. I normally, get... I normally put my Super 6 on against them just, just in case so that I anti-jinx myself. <laughs> We give the same warning to every guest as well, Matty. If they lose, the under-23s lose after you've been on, you're not coming back on, mate. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Uh, I'm, I'm going rub? for the same as you, Matty, and, and Cookie. I'm going 3-1. I think I think what will happen is, depending on, on the, the Sunday game, a couple of the, the under... Sorry, a couple of the first 11 subs that don't play will drop down yeah. for Monday yeah. and maybe come on for the first 20, 30, or maybe even full first half. And I think that might upset the balance and they'll nick one. So I think 3-1 to us. But... If we control possession, if we keep the passing accuracy high, we know with the style of football we play and the quality we've got, we should have enough to beat them. Yeah. yeah. I think we tend to have a stronger team out if the first team have played before, yep. I think. Because uh, yeah. obviously, if, like the Middlesbrough game, we, we were playing afterwards, so he, he saves the players. Yep. Whereas after the Arsenal game, you will know obviously who's played, who can play what minute. So we might see Costa, Costa, Roberts, people like that involved. So. Yep. Yeah, hopefully we're strong enough and, and we can, we can yeah. beat Reading. Although it feels like Roberts has become a bit close to the first team lately, being kind of the first sub off the bench. So yeah. I don't see him being involved with under-23s at the moment. But 
Um, Costa probably. Yeah, I mean, I really don't want to see. I, I, right. I sound horrible. I don't really want to see Costa involved at all. But <laughs> our fifteen um, million pound winger. <laughs> it's what it is. I mean, listen, we, we've talked about it before. We've confidence issue. I really hope that he gets his confidence back because he's mm. clearly got capability. But he's a very frustrating player to watch, and you can see why Wolves were happy to let him go. And yeah. in hindsight, looks like a very good deal for them, doesn't it? Yeah. He's dropped. He's dropped down the pecking order. Sorry, mate. Go on, mate. No, I was just saying. I don't, I don't know what's. I don't know what's happened to him because he started off on fire. Oh like, yeah. The full. The first two games, Liverpool and Fulham. I thought he was absolutely excellent. He was then, superb, yeah. wasn't he? But like you say now, uh, you said it before, Cookie, about some of them being, being above, probably above him in the pecking order. Like, I would have. I would have him above him. I, I would. Yeah. I definitely would, and uh, Pavard definitely. Yeah, I'd put Paveda after Raf, I'd put Paveda and, and then Somerville and then unfortunately Costa. I think if we can potentially look to offload him in the summer, um, maybe yeah, we, we should. For I thought Rob was just going to be like, is that shit? Get him in the under 18s. So I don't want him in under 20. <laughs> no, I like, I, do you know what? I've got, uh, I, I like Costa. I want him, like you Me just too. said, okay. I want his confidence to come back, but he's been so frustrating and for the money we paid at the time, which obviously then was deferred and yeah. he's bundled in this stat that we keep getting banded about, like Leeds have spent 100 million this year. Leeds, you know, yeah. He's bundled in yeah. that, isn't he? Because the transfer fee was deferred after because the year. Because it's yeah. 4 million a year, isn't it? So, yeah, I could, see them, I could see us doing the same as what Wolves did with him, loaning him out to someone and yeah. seeing how he gets on. Maybe maybe not down to the Championship this time. I think maybe I could see Costa at maybe one of the promoted teams or something like that, maybe at a Norwich or something. Looks like a so full and to me. Back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look like a full-on player. I don't know what it is about him. <laughs> you know when just you, just, you can just see, record. like you can see certain players at certain clubs, can't you? Yeah. For some reason, when we were just talking about it, then I, in the back of my head before you said it, Russ, I was like, he, he would look good at Fulham. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we can part X him for Anguissa because I like that Anguissa. I really, yeah, if they if they go down, I know, we, and hopefully we'll be looking at, at bigger and better. Teams, yeah. you know, like signing players like Rafinha again, but Anguissa looks like a serious player and in that man to man system. I think I, I saw a stat uh, the other day related to like Jules, and he, he's well he's well up there in the league. He's a yeah. big physical presence, he can dribble, he's like quick. Um, you can really see him in a man to man system because of just how strong he is. Talking to some friends this week, and this is again we're going off topic, but it's worth I think it's worth getting your opinions on it, especially as we've got a guest on the pod. Um, <laughs> if the current three go down, that go down, and or say if we look at you know West Brom, Sheffield United, and, and Fulham, I can't see really anyone going to raid you know Bramall Lane or the Hawthorns for any mm. players. But Fulham, if they go down, are going to have their squad picked apart. I don't yeah, know. You know right I don't think there. any of them are that good. I mean, Scott Parker's not the greatest team. coach. I think I mean, Ariola Luk- will go. I think Luckman <coughs> Luk- Luk- will go. Yeah. Luk- maybe maybe, maybe Deckard anyway. over Reed as well. Luckman on loan or is he signed? But yeah, Deckard over Reed's decent, isn't it? I think four or five of well. them. I think four or five of them will go. Yeah, and Wiesa yeah. as well. I think I think if you look for Scott Parker... And then we're on an under twenty three pod talking about Fulham now. But if, uh, <laughs> if 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 they if they go down, I think you've got to be worried if you're a Fulham fan because I think that squad's going to get picked apart. Yeah. No, I think yeah, they've got a few. Fun. There's there's a left back Anthony Robinson who's, who I like. Yeah. Um, and with our need for a left back as well, yeah. uh, I wouldn't mind him. Uh, nah, because do you know why? Do you know why not? Because we're going to be talking about Niall Huggins today. Oh, yeah, uh, why would we need to sign anybody? Yeah, why am I big enough <laughs> other left back from the on here meant to be talking about Huggins? <laughs> and I tell you what, right, you're more likely to get Bielsa to look closer to home unless it's a big signing, I think, anyway. So we'll have to wait. Seamless see, link right? that, you see. I knew there was a good yeah. thing to talk yeah. about Fulham. Look at that. Should we, um, <laughs> should we move, then, then, move into the player profile, profile this week? Yeah, yeah Niall Huggins. I love a welsh sided left, left welsh sided player. That's, that's proper leads, that is. And yeah. Yeah, so what, what can we get from him, Cookie? I've done the usual background. Um, having Matty here will tell me whether any of this is bullshit because obviously, <laughs> naturally, some of it will come from like transfer market, etc. Um, <clears throat> but from what I've seen, like, so Niall's primarily um, a left back, can also play left midfield, and on occasion has played central midfield. Um, as you mentioned there, um, Ross, he's played for Wales at international level, he's only played the once at under 21's level, as far as I could see. Um, recently signed a new contract on 4th of December that's going to run now until uh, summer of 2023 because that was due to expire, so good to get him um, on a new one. Um, and he's an exciting prospect. He's featured, obviously, in first-team training, recent match day squads on the bench. Seems to be bordering on making his breakthrough. Um, yeah. Oddly, as a left-back, from what I've seen, and tell me if I'm wrong on this, Matty, but 
He's down as being primary, primarily right-footed, which as a left-back is weird. Is that right? Yeah, he's, he's right-footed. Um, first so time I saw him play was in the 18s a, couple, a few years ago, and he was a left-winger. And up until, I think I don't know about last season, but I don't think I don't recall ever seeing him play left-back until this season. <clears throat> yeah. It's kind of been like a gradual like move back because he was a left-winger. Then there was they played... Um, like three at the back, five at the back, whatever you want to call it, with wing yeah. backs. So he's gone from left wing to left wing back. And then even now, if they play with the back four, he is a left back. So it's <laughs> a right kind footed of left back is so back. weird. <clears throat> but yeah, so he turned 20 in December. So he's only just 20. Hails from York originally. So he's a proper Yorkshire lad. Um, this season, he's made 10 appearances, scoring one goal, getting one assist. Um, that goal, obviously, we talked about being two weeks ago against Sunderland because obviously Joe Urquhart mentioned he needs to improve his finishing. So mm-hmm. clearly he's trying, and that was the goal, if people remember, it was that really impressive counter-attack, um, Speedy Gonzalez, Jamie Shackleton breaking away and then the, the cross in for him to finish. That was really good. Um, he seems like a really forward-thinking sort of attacking wing-back, which makes sense, uh, Matty, if he's come from being a, a left winger. Um, and yeah. he seems to get up and down the pitch really well. Now, as far as I can find... Um, and tell me if I'm wrong, Niall's been with the Leeds Academy since the beginning of his career, um, as far as I can see, since he's signed any sort of professional terms. Anyone know any different? I think he's been at the club since he was really young. Yeah, I think uh, so. Like, so. I know um, like Shackleton and uh, Robbie Gotts and Alfie, there's that picture of them, I don't know if you've seen it. And yeah, it's proper like young lads. Nines or something. And <laughs> I think Huggins has been in that same, same team. Yeah, that reminds so. me of the old Moat Byram, the picture with all the other yeah. The, yeah, old, yeah. The, the generation before. Love it. And then not not a person I really like talking about. I still don't really like him after what happened with Jack Clark. Um, but Ian Hart um, <laughs> picked out Huggins after the, the under 23s game at Burnley, saying it had a fantastic game, seemed to highlight him as, you know, a potential player. And I guess as much as I'm not the biggest fan of Ian Hart, he was a left back. He was obviously a good left back as much as he was a bit defensively dodgy. Um, so he knows that left back position inside out. So might, point, yeah. I think he might be his agent. Oh, well, that won't fucking surprise me. Might be. I, I might be wrong on that. I'll just, I'll just make that. Just to clarify. Yeah. I think I'm, I might be wrong. I don't know yeah. if he's... But he does, he does know that left back position inside out. So I guess if someone's going to judge you at Leeds for having come through the academy on capability, and that would be one of them. Um, but yeah. there's actually quite, quite a, um, a lack of information out there about um, Niall. So what I'd say is for anyone watching on on YouTube, um, you know, drop any comments if you know anything um, sort of about him that we've we've not talked about. Um, but having watched all of the under twenty three games this season um, and clearly been rated by Bielsa, for me, it looks like the most likely to break through into mm-hmm. that sort of left-back role, um, kind of ahead of Leif Davis, as far as I can see, um, if an opportunity presents itself. And he seems to have a kind of similar versatility to Matty's um, mate Robbie Gotts, um, which is perfect for a Bielsa squad play, you know, and what you yeah. can now expect from most of the the under-23s, I think. So he looks like a, a proper versatile player, which is your best chance of breaking through, really, isn't it, is that ability to play in a lot of positions. Yeah, and I'm assuming if he's right-footed, I'm assuming it won't be too difficult for him to move over to the right-hand side if he was he needed. Played, he has played right-back a couple of times this season for 23s. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I've just double-checked, Ian Hart is his agent. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Ian Hart, we are watching you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you did us dirty with Jack Clark. Don't do it again. <laughs> so, anyone else got any thoughts on, on Niall from what they've seen this season? What do you reckon, Matty? No, he- Covered it well. I mean, his, his versatility is a big asset. Uh, it actually reminds me of more like Dallas, I think. Um, left, right footed, left back, uh, can play number eight, can play right back. Uh, I do see a lot of a lot of Dallas in him. Uh, and Dallas started as a left, left winger as well. So Yeah, he did, didn't he? There's a few comparisons yeah. there, but Huggins is, is great control. Always looks to go forward from left back. Uh, really good at taking players on and so yeah, you can you can see why he was a winger um, in the in the youth days, and I've got to admit I was surprised. I've been watched him a, a handful of times in the 18s. I was surprised when he when he moved back to left back, but uh, yeah, it seems to be doing well, and he's been really good. And like you say, uh, would be realistic for him to to break through this season. Uh, I don't know. I I think I'd probably still have Davis ahead of him. Would you? Um, I just think we look so much more balanced with a left footed left back, and yeah. Just don't think Davis has got the versatility, has he? No, well, he's tried him a few times at centre-back, hasn't he? And he came on at centre-back at Old Trafford. He's not a centre-back. That game was a write-off anyway, but 
He's a bit little. Yeah, he's like. definitely he's not a centre back. Um, he's a left back. Uh, but yeah, if Huggins can break ahead of Davis, then he's got to be next in line. But that is a uh, an area that a lot of people consider as one of our weaknesses. Um, yeah. I actually think Alex has been playing really well, but he has recently. To be then fair. if he gets injured, who, who's stepping in there? Because Dallas is playing a lot in midfield, so. Yeah, there's a yeah, lot of Leeds fans who've been crying out for a specialist left back. Um, I'm yeah, not yeah, sure that I mean. Bielsa will ever do that because he likes the versatility, don't he? As we've talked about a yeah, lot, yeah. but um, and I think that's what goes against Leif Davis. I don't think he is as versatile, which is what makes me feel like Huggins might be a bit closer. But I think they're fairly level playing, and I think um, Huggins is a little bit younger than Davis, isn't he? I think Davis is 21, so um, we'll have to see how his development goes. But exciting opportunity. What do you think, Rob, of what you've seen of him? Yeah, I mean, I don't think we need to be going out and signing a left back. And I know, like you've said, there are a lot of Leeds fans think we do. Uh, I think for now, if we can tie Alioski down for another year or potentially two, he's probably going to want two and a bit of money, isn't he? Because if not, he'll be out or, or heading over to Europe. We expect probably potentially Turkey or, do or not say Italian. It. Um, do no, not I mean, that's, that's the club he's naturally been linked with. I, I don't know why, yeah. but obviously there's something there. But I think he probably could end up as easily in Spain or Italy as well. But I think if, yeah. if we don't offer him the numbers for two years, he's not going to stay for a one-year extension. It's just my, yeah. my opinion. But I think with Davis and obviously the man we're talking about to bring it back on track, obviously with Niall, I don't think there is a big rush for us to be able to go out and have to replace that left-back position because I think both Leaf and also Niall have got the ability to step up. I mean, obviously, he was on the bench, wasn't he, against Palace? He was on the bench before that when we lost to Everton. He was on the bench as Spurs, I think. he's So he's flirting with it, a bit like Leaf has, uh, with slightly less first-team exposure. Um, I think mm. when we're safe, when we're comfortable, depending on injuries and rehabilitation and what's going on in the kind of last quarter of the season, it would be yeah. nice to see him get a game um, or two to get some minutes. I think there's a few lads we've spoke about on this podcast, which would be good to see them up there and seeing what they can do with a bit no pressure, you know, we're safe and stuff. But Yeah, um, I hope they're driving each other on, you know, because I think yeah. Davis and Huggins can really complement each other's development because it's always good to have a couple of players on a similar level to try and outdo each other, help yeah, you yeah. progress further, and having Alioski to learn from, hopefully not from his madness, but also <laughs> Dallas, who obviously plays that position and his versatility. There's some good, really good players to, to learn from there. I mean, I think yeah, Niall's got the Dallas. advantage over Leaf in regards to attacking quality. Just, just, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's just, again, I've not really got any statistical evidence to prove that. Just my opinion from watching <laughs> him. Uh, but I think, I think Niall looks more comfortable moving forward and linking in one two. Whereas, yeah. uh, again, uh, I think Leaf, although he's a brilliant player, maybe hasn't got that same. Um, attacking um, edge that now I think that's the advantage that now will have over Leaf. Um, but Leaf's that, really good on Call of Duty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's always playing with Calvin and that. Watch yeah, him on Twitch. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's one for the future. He's a great, Johnny, great, great looking player. Great looking player. Yeah, Johnny Alioski plays COD as well, by the way, and he's fucking, he's, he's, he's as mental on COD <laughs> as he is on in playing in real life and in playing football. It must cool. be a what big thing at Leeds that that in the dressing room. Uh, yeah, they love it, don't they? Coop, Jan- Coop's Jansen plays as well. Was, Jansen was really good at a game. Uh, I'm not... CSGO. CSGO. Uh, he, yeah, he, yeah. he, spon- he owns an eSports He sponsors team. an e... Yeah, I'm going to say he yeah. runs an eSports team, doesn't he? Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Would to be fucking fuming at them, ball. Apologies. <laughs> 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 Right. Uh, anyway, that's it then, boys. Niall Huggins is the next one to make a break through. I love a, a left-sided Welsh Leeds player. That's, yeah, um, me too. Speed was my hero growing up, and if Niall Huggins can go anywhere getting close to that, then yeah, what yeah. a boy. He'll one of be. mine also, mate. One of mine also. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that is it for this week. Matty, thanks for joining us. Do you want to pimp your uh, socials and your website and all that sort of stuff for us? Yeah, so the website is LUSC Academy Central, and the Twitter username for that is LUSC Academy News. And then my personal one is at Matty underscore Ingham 17. Uh, thank you for having me on, lads. Really appreciate it. No problem, mate. Oh, for welcome, anyone mate. anyone watching, um, there's a really great interview um, that Matty's done with Robbie Gotts, obviously one of the lads you'll know of ours that's out on loan. So go give that a watch. Um, that's on your website. Is that on YouTube as well, Matty? It's on the website and on the YouTube as well. Yeah, fab. Brilliant. Excellent. Get that watched. Uh, Cookie, where can people find you? Oh, mate, at LUFC Miguel, of which the full story shall never be revealed on here. <laughs> <laughs> and Rob, what about you? At Juicy Rob, J U C E E R O B. Which we still need the story for. People <laughs> want the story behind Juicy Rob. That's going to come on the Patreon. It's going to be behind the paywall. Right? <laughs> behind the paywall, yeah. Oh, is that when we do the topless pod? <laughs> exactly. It'll come out at the same yeah. time as the Christmas calendar. <laughs> Cookie's vest calendar. No, thank yeah. you. 
<laughs> and uh, you can find me at Rossbow 1984 uh, you can find us as a collective at Peacock Raw and follow the Adelites as well for the great work he does make sure you're subscribed on YouTube if you're not why not it's free just bloody press the button it's really that easy you get all of our uh, videos live every week they're pretty much all premiered so if you want to join in the chats with us whilst we're whilst we're watching the videos along you can chat to us and we can uh, kind of back up our points maybe yeah become part of the community guys we've got some really great people on there who talk to us every week just come and get involved in the conversation let us know what you think about Leeds what you think about the academy what you think about us tell us if you think we're knobheads just come along and call us a knobhead be fine yeah just make sure you comment we want comments that's fine <laughs> <laughs> we'll respond to anything uh, so until we are back next week with a, a review of uh, a Leeds victory against Reading and previewing the next game it's uh, goodbye from me it's goodbye from Matty goodbye goodbye from Cookie goodbye goodbye from Rob bye and we'll see you next time Leeds 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 bye driver. Leeds 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 most of our stats come from LUFC stats or LUFC data on Twitter a very special thanks to Barney Stewart Cookie Ewan and Howard Metcalf Josh Pearson Laura Leon and Rob The Light Show and all our family and friends so many games to play don't care what's on your mind I should have said no but I